Hello everyone, Flying Scotsman here. Welcome to this video. I was recently asked how to install Windows 98 without a uh, floppy disk drive. Well, I forgot your uh, YouTube username, but uh, hold on tight because this video is for you. Uh, today we're going to be using the Dell Dimension 4100, which in fact does have a floppy drive, but we are going to be uh, using the Windows 98 CD to boot the system up, um, to partition and format the hard drive, and to then set about installing Windows 98. Um, I will explain a couple of conventions along the way, a couple of things that I do, and a couple of uh, other ways that certain things could be done, but I will try and keep it as simple as I possibly can. Now for those of you who do not know the specs of the Dell Dimension 4100, it has a Pentium 3 processor, slot bun, 866 megahertz, backed up by 512 megabytes of SD RAM, an 80 gig hard drive, <coughs> uh, DVD ROM and writer drives, a 1.44 meg floppy drive, and an iOmega Zip 100 drive. Um, to install Windows 98, I'm going to be using uh, my Windows 98 second edition. Plus, I have uh, driver disks and uh, application software disks from Dell. Uh, the machine has um, a couple of uh, cards. The uh, video is provided by um, an NVIDIA GeForce 2 MX card. The sound is uh, provided by Creative Labs EM10 EMK 10K or whatever it is. I I always forget them all. Sound Blaster Live Value card, 5.1 uh, surround sound. It doesn't have a bad sound at it, uh, to it at all. It has a modem, I forget what sort, but I did add a Linksys network card. Anyway, let's get started. Now, before you go booting from a CD, the first thing you want to do is make sure that uh, your BIOS is set up to do it. Now to access the BIOS, you, it will either be delete, um, F2 if you're on a Dell, <coughs> F10 if you're on an HP or Compaq, um, or for other systems, you know, it could be anything, F1, or, you know, it just, it, it does depend on the system you have. Look out for any prompts in the post screen or anything like that you should be able to find out how to get into the BIOS. Anyway, so on this system, it uses um, it uses the uh, tabbed view BIOS, which is uh, kind of favoured by AMI, the interface. Um, <clears throat> so what we need to do is uh, we need to go to the boot tab. So to do this, I can just press the right arrow key and um, check the... Uh, first boot device. On the on the case of this machine, um, it tries the floppy first, and if it can't get anything through the floppy drive, it'll try the CD-ROM drive, after which it will try the hard drive. Absolutely fine. Um, APM mode only determines the action of system when the PCI power management enable wake up event occurs. So basically, you know, all this is power, uh, <laughs> all this is powered stuff. Sorry, I'm just reading this out. Um, <clears throat> quick and quiet booter enabled. Um, restore an AC power loss, last state, uh, power on LAN, power on PME, nope. Don't need to worry about this. All you really need to worry about is uh, the boot order. Make sure the CD-ROM drive comes before the hard drive. Now, the Windows 98 CD is already uh, inserted in this machine, so what I can do... Exit the BIOS, saving changes, and then um, just basically wait on it booting up. Okay, so now we're in the Windows 98 CD startup menu. Got two choices here, boot from the hard drive, we don't want to be doing that, or boot from the CD-ROM. Now just to let you know, I have pre um, F disk the hard drive. There is no partitions on it. The hard drive is not not bootable. See, 
Tried to beat him from the hard drive. Nada. Hee haw. So, didn't expect that to work. Basically, what I want to do, boot from the CD ROM. Now, you could start Windows 98 setup from the CD ROM, and what that would do is that would automatically partition and format the hard drive for you. Um, in fact, why don't I show you? So basically you end up with a screen that kind of looks like DOS setup or Windows 3.1 setup or even Windows um, NT2000 or XP setup at a stretch. Welcome to setup. The setup prepares Windows 98 to run on your computer. To set up Windows now, press enter. Uh, blah 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 blah. So basically if I press enter here it would uh, configure the unallocated disk space for me automatically. Um, it would then ask to restart the computer on doing so I would reselect install Windows 98 and um, it would then go ahead and format the disk and then take me straight into Windows 98 setup. To be honest though I want to show you all how I do it manually because there are certain things that I do. Plus I do like to have control over my own install. Come on, you can do it. Ah, I knew you can do it. So what we're going to do is, for the time being, we're going to start the computer without CD-ROM support. And basically what we have is, we're basically in a Windows 98 boot disk, except it's running from the CD-ROM. So what we need to do here is type FDisk. And then we get this screen. Your computer has a hard disk larger than 512 megabytes. This version of Windows includes improved support for large disks, resulting in more efficient use of a disk space, use of disk space on large drives, and allowing disks of over two gigabytes to be formatted as a single drive. Basically, in layman's terms, this is just F disk saying, "Look, I support FAT32. Would you like to enable that support?" If you press yes, any partitions you make will be FAT32. If you press no, any partitions you make will be limited to the uh, 2 gigabyte size and will be FAT16. Um, this is an 80 gig disk in here as far as I know. Um, so yes, we definitely want to enable large hard disk support. Just type Y and press enter if Y is not already present. Got four options here, create a DOS partition or logical DOS drive, set active partition, delete partition or logical DOS drive, or display partition information. I want to create a partition, because if I went to display partition information, nothing, no partitions defined. So, select number one, type one and press enter, if one's not already in there. I want to create a primary DOS partition. And basically what this is going to do is verified drive integrity it seems to do that twice but um, I don't know what it's actually doing something found says to me no doubt <clears throat> yeah this can take a while on a larger hard disk Do you wish to use do you wish to use the maximum available size for a primary DOS partition and make the partition active? In this case I do. If uh, you wanted to create multiple partitions, however, you could select no, type your partition size for the primary partition. Then you would go ahead and make an extended DOS partition and then um, you would uh, have one or more logical DOS drives present. Basically, again, however you wanted to do it. Um, I do wish to use the uh, entire partition though, so I'm just going to keep the default yes, and then it's going to go ahead and create it. Okay, now this seems to be taking a bit longer. So, there is a lot of waiting around. And, uh, you know, when setting up a hard disk using 
a Windows 98 boot CD because the FDisk and format commands, they are more than adequate for the job, but they are quite archaic. So, um, you know, if you create a partition, for example, you cannot quick format a newly created parti partition. You have to do an unconditional format. And to be honest, it's not a bad idea to do that anyway, because, I mean, then you, you know, you pretty much defined, you've, you pretty much, um, <sighs> what am I trying to say? <laughs> You're pretty much... You're pretty much um, validating the integrity of the hard disk. You know when you um, when you do an unconditional format. Obviously, you know if there's any physical problems, any bad sectors, or anything like that. You know, an unconditional format would mark would well. It would uh, it would certainly make it known. Whether it would mark it, I really don't know, but. Um, in fact, I, I don't think it would. I think you'd have to low-level format, but yeah. Anyway, um, I'm just going to let this continue, and then I'll be back once it's finished. So after the partition is done being created, you end up with this screen. You must restart your system for your changes to take effect. Any drives you have created or changed will be formatted after, no, must be formatted after you restart. Shut down Windows before restarting. Um, so, yep, press escape to get out of FDisk. And then just restart the machine. And... Um, what will happen on the next restart is uh, these new partitions, well, however many created, in my case just the one, the new partition will be assigned a drive letter. And you'll know that this has happened because if you uh, look at um, the uh, readout from Messydex... Oh, Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. So if we look at the uh, messy decks readout, <coughs> copyright Microsoft Corporation, blah, 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 all rights reserved. Drives D and E. So that means drive C has actually um, been already allocated before the CD-ROM drives were allocated to drive letter. Good. So now we want to format drive C. And um, this, I've seen people actually get stuck on this. And I used to get stuck myself. Because, you know, you would think that I could just write format C colon straight from the command line. It would be on this uh, emulated boot disk. No, it isn't. So, where is the format command? Actually, you'll find it in the D drive under Win98. So, go format C colon slash S. Basically, what we're doing here is saying format the C drive and make it bootable. Warning. All data on non-removable disk drive C will be lost. Proceed with format. Why? Now, I don't know why this is saying like 1075 megabytes, but um, you can't really trust um, what um, sides this report says in Windows, because... Like I said, I mean, these commands are quite archaic. You know, a lot of them hail from MS-DOS. You know, MS-DOS 6, I believe. Um, <clears throat> well, certainly 7, I mean, 
Certainly when Windows 98 itself was made, or even second edition, 80 gig drives were just not a thing that um, your average Windows 98 user would have. And certainly, um, I believe when these commands were made, these versions of the uh, heftisk and format programs were made, uh, Windows 95 OS R2, 1996-97, 80 gig drives certainly were not a thing that um, a consumer would have had his or her hands on. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so this is going to format. This is going to take um, quite some time, I will admit. Um, so my recommendation is, uh, well, have a cup of tea, enjoy it, then have another one because <laughs> you don't have a lot of time. So yeah, do something. Get a, get a, a modern smartphone and play Crossy Road. So now the hard drive has been formatted. So we can enter a name, just call it Windows 98. Good, hard drive is formatted, is bootable. But this machine, if I were to boot it now, would only take us to a very barren DOS prompt. No CD-ROM support. All you could really do is read stuff from floppies. Now, that's not a problem, but there is one thing that I do like to do. Now, if you wanted, you could run Windows 98 setup from d colon backslash win 98, install it, you'd have no problems at all. See, you could just run it, it would run scan disk, and then it would go into setup. You would have no problems at all if you did that. But if there's anything you wanted to install down the line, you know, any networking drivers or anything, you'd always have to have your Windows 98 CD to hand. And because I've got quite a large hard drive, I can store the Windows 98 installation files on it. Now, OEMs have a certain way of doing this. And this is the way that uh, we're going to do. So basically, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to log to the C drive by going C colon, press enter. And I'm in there. Now I want to make a directory. MD Windows. Had to just double check I was make, uh, writing the right commands because I'm kind of getting used to uh, the the uh, born again shell from Linux, uh, MKDIR. Um, <coughs> now with the Windows directory made, I want to log to it. MD options within the Windows directory, log to it, and then within options, MD tabs, and then change directory tabs. Excellent. So what we're going to do here is we're going to copy the, the um, Windows 98 installation files from the d colon backslash win 98 directory to C op Windows options tabs. So to do that, simply copy d colon backslash win 98 backslash star dot star basically what i'm saying is in this directory copy everything uh, d198 and every file of every file type Now, any directories that are in the Win98 uh, Win directory on the CD will not be copied because, um, as far as I know, copy will only do kind of single level copying. So, you know, you can't do you can't do it recursively for directories, unfortunately. That's where the uh, command xcopy comes in, but uh, that was actually kind of phased out in later versions of Windows. Very sad. I like the xcopy command. So, <clears throat> this is just the way copying files shouldn't take too long, depending on the speed of your computer, CD, ROM drive, hard drive, etc, etc. And that's everything copied. So now, what we can do, is we can actually go ahead and remove the Windows 98 CD ROM.
and then just hit the reset button. The machine will then reboot. Because we made the hard disk bootable, we can get to a command prompt. Now what we need to do here is um, we need to log to the directory we copied all the setup files. We can do that by going cd windows slash ops and options slash cabs and then type setup. Uh, please wait while setup initializes. Setup is now going to perform a routine check on your system to continue. Press enter to quit setup. Press escape. So this is now running scan disk just to see, you know, in what health the uh, file system is in. Hopefully there should not be any problems at all. Nope, there's not. <clears throat> and now we are in Windows 98 setup. Congratulations on choosing Windows 98, the software that um, makes your computer more powerful, reliable, manageable and entertaining. With Windows 98 you can connect to the internet quickly and easily and Windows 98 is even easier to use Windows 95. Setup will take from 30 to 60 minutes depending on the speed of your compu computer. To begin, click continue. Good. And now it's uh, preparing the Windows 98 setup wizard which will guide you through the rest of the setup process. Please, please wait! Okay, so now we're on select directory. You can see here that it wants to install Windows as in C colon backslash Windows dot zero zero zero. No, we don't want to be doing that. I want to install it in C colon backslash Windows. The only reason it's doing this is because this is a full copy of Windows 98 rather than an upgrade. So, you know, it thinks that... Um, you know, there's already a Windows installation in there that it doesn't really want to interrupt. Um, now, if there was, we could use the same procedure that I'm using now to hoodwink it into actually upgrading to the uh, newer Windows. Uh, well, we could hoodwink it into actually upgrading an existing Windows installation. As it is, all that's there is the C Windows directory with the options directory and the capital directory and the setup files. So we can safely install Windows in here. See colon backslash Windows. That is normally the default place to install it. Um, it will say caution this directory see Windows ex already exists. If you continue files in this directory may be overwritten. Do you wish, uh, do you want to continue with the specified directory? Yes, I do. Because I've not copied anything, uh, any actual uh, uncompressed system files in there we're going to be okay all i've copied is the windows 98 install files and i've copied them in a directory that's kind of out of the way of anything else now um you know from here you can choose any kind of install typical portable compact custom in fact from here windows 98 setup would just kind of go as normal so, you know, you can just go ahead and install as you want. I want to install pretty much everything, um, apart from internet connection sharing. Don't need that. Don't need online services. I'll take all the system tools, and I'll take the multi-language support. Okay, and now I want to type a computer name. Um, work group Wakefield that's the work group that I belong to at least here on my network here at home English British uh, establishing your location United Kingdom I don't wish to create a boot disk and now we're at the uh, final um, part of the setup wizard before uh, file copying begins which says start copying files the windows 98 setup wizard now has enough information to start copying windows 98 files to your computer if you want to review or change any settings click back to start copying windows files click next and there we go so this shouldn't take too long um at least on this system this timer can be inaccurate I don't think that there's any intelligent thing in this timer that actually, um, you know, kind of measures what, like, your computer speed is and things like that to come up with an 
an estimated um, time remaining. Um, although I could be wrong, if I am, please correct me. I think what it does is at um, every particular stage of setup, literally it'll fire a line of code that um, actually tells this to count the clock back. I, I, I mean, that's, I could, I could be completely wrong, but um, I mean, that's my theory on how this particular bit works. Anyway, now is a good time to go make yourself another cup of tea. So um, go and do that while this installs. I'll be back towards the end of setup. So now we're finished with the first part of installation. We can restart the machine. So what will happen now is the machine will uh, boot into Windows 98 for the first time. <coughs> Billy Carr, Road Geek, has said, and, and to be honest, I kind of agree with him, this Windows 98 screen getting ready to start Windows for the first time is nowhere near as exciting as the, um, as the Windows 95 one. Now, this is something else I've always found a bit odd. That uh, some version, well, Windows 98 Second Edition, and indeed some versions of Windows Millennium Edition. I don't understand why they do this, but um, they have you put your name and company in and agree to the license agreement after you've installed Windows 98. I mean, yeah, okay, I know that the license agreement would be available in the box if you wanted to read it. But um, <clears throat> why not do that stuff before? I mean, even Windows, well, even Windows NT 2000 and XP, to have you read the license agreement. Um, you know, before you actually um, run setup, all they have you do. Um, is uh, after it's restarted, is type your name and company name and what have you. But yeah, I mean, that's that's just kind of a wee thought that I've had. You know, why did 98 Second Edition or nine or uh, certain versions of ME have you put this, have you agreed to the license agreement after they're partway installed? In fact, actually, in these, in the case of Windows 9X, obviously the bulk of the installation has happened before this point. By the time you get that to this point, you're literally um, crossing the T's and dotting the lowercase j's. Anyway, so I'm just going to type in my name, company name, agreed to the license agreement. I totally read that. Now I'm going to put in the product key. Windows 98 Setup Wizard. Start wizard. Windows 98 saved all information. Click finish to continue starting Windows 98. I will. Okay. So what's happening now is, uh, you know, we we are in, um, we are actually running inside Windows 98. You can tell with the uh, Windows 98 esque UI as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the uh, mini Windows 3.1 interface that we had before. And what's happening now is the computer is setting up any hardware that it finds, that it knows about. So that's a good thing. Just um, searching. Windows is now detecting uh, non-plug-and-play hardware in your computer. Caution, this may take a few minutes and may, may cause your computer to stop responding. If the progress indicator stops for a long time and there is no disk activity, please restart your computer. I also find it quite useful to uh, check that magnification of the magn magnifying glass searching around the computer as well. That, uh, that usually helps um, to detect whether um, everything's going. Because if that stops, that's usually a pretty good indicator that it's went and crashed. Now, at this point, setup usually likes to... <clears throat> On some machines, it will restart again at this point. 
Um, on other machines, it will go straight to the uh, final part of setup, which is where you would uh, select your region and Windows would set up the control panel, help files. Oh yeah, on this machine, it doesn't feel the need to restart. On my 2001 custom built, it would restart um, before coming back here. So basically, we're just going to check uh, the date and time. Sunday, May the 14th. Uh, 2017 um, and the time is 3 I think 21 it was nearly there can't remember whether I think I changed a CMOS battery out in 2014 when I got this machine uh, Greenwich Mean Time apply okay Windows is now setting up the control panel adding start menu shortcuts Grinding the floppy drive. And now, this is the final part. On my 01 custom belt, this did used to take quite some time. On here though, with the um, faster processor, the massive amount of memory, and the much bigger and faster hard drive, it's not doing too badly. But I will actually um i will actually uh, pause this video while this does what it's gonna do so we are very nearly done estimated time remaining one minute um <clears throat> it's probably taken about two or three minutes just to actually get through this whole updating system settings bit but, um, yeah, it's quite funny. I've, I've always found that Windows 98 setup uh, took a lot longer than Windows 95 setup. Um, I know Windows 98 is exponentially bigger than Windows 95, but, um, you know, even the file copying uh, phase apart, things just took longer in Windows 98 setup. Anyway, that is Windows 98 fully installed. So what's going to happen here is um, Windows is going to ask you for a username when it logs in, depending on whether or not you installed any uh, kind of networking thing, anything that would uh, suggest you might need a login dialog box. <clears throat> and then um, it will detect the plug and play monitor. So um, username Jay Wakefield, I'm just going to press enter, Dell. Monitor, good. I think that's just information that the monitor will actually send to the machine. So if you do see that, um, oh yeah, I found a Dell EF whatever it is monitor. I think, um, I think that's just the monitor sending some information out about itself that um, is picked up by the uh, hardware wizard. Any monitor driver will work with it, usual plug and play monitor driver. But if you do have a driver on a CD that you would prefer to use because of ICM color profiling or anything, you know, you could do that as well. So obviously, you know, it's just a couple of last minute uh, things set up lights to do the first time it logs in. And there you go. You have your desktop, you have a Welcome to Windows 98 screen, a very quiet Welcome to Windows 98 screen because no sound drivers are installed. And you're about ready to go. So Windows 98 is now up and running on here. Hard disk capacity 74 gigabytes. And um, now it's time to install the drivers. Now because this video was literally about the Windows 98 setup process itself, um, I think I'm going to end it here. Windows 98 is now installed on the Dell Dimension 4100. I'm actually going to go ahead and install all of my drivers and applications. Um, obviously 
you know, if you have if you have driver CDs, you can use them. If not, you might need to go and look for drivers over the internet um, for your particular system. Dell still keeps old driver. Uh, Dell still keeps old drivers. Um, HP's website kind of does sometimes. Sometimes they appear to go. Sometimes if you poke it with a big stick, it will work. Um, and other websites, well, it's a bit of a, it's a bit checkered as to whether um, legacy drivers are kept or for how long or you know how far back webs uh, OEMs are willing to keep drivers for um, legacy products. But um, all that aside, you know, hopefully you can get hold of some drivers for whichever system you own. And um, you should be able to get it up and running once more. So with that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I'm just going to go ahead and install my Dell drivers. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to the Flying Scotsman YouTube channel. If you're looking for more things The Flying Scotsman, you can also follow The Flying Scotsman YouTube channel Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. To see my latest video, click on the link within the browser window. In the meantime, thank you for watching and please do feel free to join me for my next video. Cheerio bye.